Welcome back, and if you're just joining me, you are watching The Literary Bar, a place for the book, author, and reader, and you're just in time for some classical poetry. John Pepper Clark was born in April 6, 1935, in Kiabodo, Ijo, Ijo community in Nigeria. He was a journalist, playwright, and scholar slash critic. He wrote essays on African poetry, he died on the 13th of October, 2020. The Casualty is one of the most important poems that any country that has experienced war or is attempting to embrace violence should read. He describes the ravages of war, the wanton destruction of lives and properties of the Nigerian Biafran Civil War, to be precise. At the end, he lets us all know that violence and carnage unle unleashed during wars, insurrection, make all of us casualties and victims of man's inhumanity to man. Let me share some excerpt from this remarkable poem that should be taught to everyone, even as some people still hold romantic notions towards armed conflicts. The casualties. The casualties are not only those who are dead, they are well out of it. The casualties are not only those who are wounded, Though they await burial by installment, the casualties are not only those who have lost persons or properties hard as it is. The casualties are not only those who started a fire and now cannot put it out. Thousands are burning that had no say in the matter. The casualties are not only those who escaping the shattered shell become prisoners in a fortress of fallen walls. The casualties are many and a good number, well outside the scenes of ravage and wreck. They are emissaries of rift, so smug in smoke rooms they hunt abroad. They do not see the funeral piles at home eating up the forest. The drums overwhelm the guns. Caught in a clash of counterclaims and charges, when not in the niche others have left, we fall all casualties of the war, because we cannot hear each other speak, because eyes have ceased to see the face from the crowd, because whether we know or do not know the extent of wrong on all sides, we are characters now other than before the war began. They stay at home unsettled by taxes and rumors, the looters for office and wares, fearful every day the owners may return. We are all casualties. All sagging as are, the cases celebrated for Kwashioko, the unforeseen camp followers of not just our war. In the casualty, it's so obvious that the clamor for war, for violence, for insurrection, we no go green. We must, we must. At the end of the day, when all has been said and done, and we take to the streets to exhibit our strength, we lose. We, we all have the ringside seat to the after effects of violence. I use violence in place of war, in place of insurrection, because when people are hurt, when properties are lost, all of us bear the brunt of things that we had no say in directly or indirectly. In the casualties, we have seen the picture written in words that describe so eloquently how the people who go in for these meetings come out, they do not agree, and they say, okay, let the streets determine, but they are not there. They do not see the piles of bodies. In recent times, some of us that are saying, please let us talk, let us embrace dialogue, are looked upon as people who are lily levered. The young people come out and say, oh, the older ones in our generation, they are just sitting. They don't even feel as, this is, as, as, as if they're anything. They just leave it for us young people to fight. I told a young man recently, I said, my uncle was 15 years old when he fought in the Biafran War. 15. 
There was no social media for him to write. They were taken into the forest. And till today, at 72, he is still traumatized from what he saw during the Biafran War. Because when Ojuku and Gowan would not agree, we remember the famous statement, on Aburi we stand, no going back. Thousands of people lost their lives because communication failed. The words we were using were so heavy, heavily laden with hate, with vitriol, that we could not call back. The words had gone on the streets and set destruction in motion. So I am telling, now that history has come back to school, that poems such as this should be taught to young people. Members in the house, the, gov the government official, should read this poem and know what happens when dialogue fails, when you refuse to do your part, when corruption becomes the order of the day and the people on the other side will say, we no go agree. But I am begging one and all that let us come together as Nigerians and fix these problems. It is better to talk than to war. They say it's better to jaw jaw than to war war. So please, I'm leaving us with this. Let's always opt for peace and dialogue. Let's eschew words that are inflammatory because it's only in peace that we can enjoy freedom as a nation. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Till I come your way next time, let's enjoy some of Onyeka Wenu's One Love.